Well, folks, it's been five years, and that means it's time to break the fourth wall. That's your opening? What does it even mean? It ain't very good, is it? Fine, you do it then, you enormous babies. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the obsidian- Inefficient! What? Say something once, why say it thrice? It did feel a little canned. Kinda huckstery. Well, I'm a little rusty. I feel like I ain't talked in a spell. What is it we're supposed to be doing, anyway? Introducing the Obsidian National Forest 5th Anniversary Splashtacular. If and we can figure out a way to. I think we just did. Did we? Huh. I guess we did. It's the Obsidian National Forest 5th Anniversary Splashtacular. Starring Brysaac, Crispin, Jeff, and some spiders. Featuring a recap of the story so far, a behind-the-scenes look at how the show is made, a musical performance by Air Supply, and a special preview of things yet to be. All this at least on the Obsidian National Forest 5th Anniversary Splashtacular. Brought to you by Teletech Turnicon Technologies. Teletech Turnicon Technologies. Helping people become something different. What's a splashtacular? Uh, it's like a wet spectacular. Are we gonna get wet? You can get wet any day you set your mind to it. If you're not a coward. Five years ago, the first episode of Obsidian National Forest debuted on YouTube. And from that little old MPEG file, an entertainment empire was born. I mean, entertainment empire's a little bold. I think at best we might strive to be an amusement municipality. Fair enough. But lo, how far we have come. Haven't we, though? Let's take a look back. It all started when I found a flashlight. You found a what, young man? A flashlight. Ah. Uh, I thought you said something else. You ever been outside the forest? What do you mean outside the forest? It isn't all forest, you know. They say there are even places with no trees. Who says that? Folk. You know folk I don't know? I've forgotten more folk than you'll ever know. Hi, Ampersand. Hello, Brysic. What you got there, Crispin? Uh, it's called a flashed light. I got it from Evelyn Team. Is that one of her people things? Yeah, it's a people thing. Where does she keep finding these things? What's it do? Whoa. Shit. Mm hmm. What are you gonna do with that? I don't know. Maybe a party? Oh, we should definitely do a party. A real ass party. A rowdy jam. A grungy do. Noodle bounce. Beach blanket. Hog junket. A real fuck waffle. What was that last one? I don't know. So we went to invite Jeff. I'm an essential element of any party. Are you interested in parties? We're all looking for a party. When you come right down to it. Are you interested in partying with us? Well... I tell you, Brazic, I have communed with more souls than a vole's got hairs. Yes, sir, I've met a lot of folk. I've been all around this old brambled existence. You ever seen a place with no trees? Sure I have, you know. I tell you truly, I have seen a place that's just water. What, like the lake? Yeah, like the lake, but... Big, bigger than your mother's love, big as God's plans, a lake that's just fucking big. 
So, uh, are you coming to the party? Yes, my children. And Agatha. Do you want to come to a party? Will there be raccoons? Maybe. You know how hard it is to keep them from a party. Did you invite any raccoons? No. I don't reckon we know any raccoons by their given Christian names. Do you know what happens when you invite a raccoon in? I don't think so. <laughs> so, you want to come? Sure. Scratch me out a map. I got some paper here. Well, that's when Ampersand got real fixated on that moonless place, Huey. You know, with this thing, we could probably even go into the moonless place. What do you want to look in there for? I don't know. Don't you ever wonder what's up with it? Why there's a part of the forest so dark even we can't see in it? I guess. Like, that's weird, right? Look, I ain't a philosopher. I knew a bat who went into the moonless place. She figured it might be a good spot to hunt. What was that thing that bats do with the noises? Echo looking? Yeah, the screen peeking. Anyway, she went in and she yelled a whole bunch, but even she couldn't see anything. Couldn't even find the tree. She got lost, and I never saw her again. Then how do you know the story? I don't remember. What was this bat's name? T Tina? Tina. I think it was Tina. Did I know this Tina? It kind of rings a bell, doesn't it? Tina. Tina. Yeah, Ampersand and Evelyntine got their whole thing about the mysteries of the forest and whatnot. I used to think I was too high to understand them, but then I realized they were just weird. Well, that, and you're high all the time. Not too. Hey, Evelyntine, why don't you join the party? Something is here, Ampersand. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm watching for it. You mean like s snakes? No. Not like snakes. Like a formless presence. An incorporeal awareness. Something left over. Oh, yeah. Totally. I'm gonna go over there. That was a good party, though. It was once I busted out the whiskey. Good snacks, too. Yeah. Speaking of snacks, remember that time Brysic choked on a vole? I did not choke on a vole. You did choke on a vole. You did indeed choke on a vole. I did not choke on a vole. I held on to a vole for a while in my throat. Crispin, you're small, yeah? I am not large. Reckon you'd fit in my mouth? Maybe? Wanna find out? It's for science. I do like science. You need to vomit, Brazic? How long you been there, Jeff? I'm everywhere, my friend. Now tell me, what has brought about this urgent need to irritate? I got something stuck in there. Just what do you got stuck in there? Me. So, is this a food thing or a sex thing? Some things are both. Alright, I'm leaving. Hold on now, I happen to know a way you can get your insides on the outside. Spinning in circles? Tried it. Hanging upside down? I ain't got the tarsal fortitude. No, no, no. To the east, there is a wall. Well, what kind of wall? The structure, my dude, not everything is something. Anyhow, in the shadow of this wall, there grows a bush. <laughs> and on this bush grow the juiciest, bitterest, most ball-tripping psychotropic berries ever to sprout from nature's boundless and unknowable breast. And these berries will make me throw up? Eventually, yeah. I mean, some other stuff's gonna happen first. Works for me, is all I'm saying. But let it never be said that old Jeff isn't there for his friends when they choke on a vole. I ain't choke on a vole. Sure, sweetie. Well, them's the berries, I guess. Whatever happens, Brysic, I forgive you. I would love it if you passed up one opportunity to make our situation even weirder. No, I mean it. 
I am an animal whose death gives life to another. The only variable is time. If my time is now, I cannot change that. Whatever, nerd. Get ready to ride the wave. <laughs> well, I don't feel... <laughs> Truman? Brysic? You look so... free. It's beautiful. It is beautiful, Brysic. It is beautiful to be free. Truman? Don't go. I have to. It's time. No, I've had enough of your time, bullshit, man. Maybe things are meant to be, or maybe they just suck. Either way, let me get all up in my feelings about it, or else what's the f***ing point? Do I accept responsibility of life being what I make it, or do I let myself feel neither pride nor shame because it's all just how it's supposed to be? Is there something in between? I don't know. I'm a f***ing owl. What am I supposed to do? Come home with us, that's what. Uh, ampersand? What are you doing here? You're apparently in danger, though I still don't really understand why. This place is... wrong. And I wanted to make sure you were okay. I mean, we all did. Don't look at me. I just came to pick up some of those kind berries. Ampersand. You... you do care. I mean, I'd be pretty bored if you, like, died or whatever. I love you. Cool. Where's the vole? Truman? Truman? I guess he's really gone. I'm sorry, I guess? I won't forget you, Truman. I can't change who I am, but I can pay more attention to others. Okay, let's get your stoned ass home, buddy. Anywho, you choked on a vole. Yeah, well, we all got our individual shames. Like your interpretive dance phase. I ain't ashamed of that. Or when Crispin got big into puppets. Oh, right. So, Crispin's gotten really into puppets. What's his pattern? Pattern of what? Victims. In his increasingly elaborate murder tableaus designed to bestow upon him immortality, because that's what I hear when someone says they're really into puppets. Come on, Brysic. Puppetry is a noble art. And so's murder. If and you do it right. The kid being into puppets wouldn't have been a problem if the puppet in question hadn't been, you know, evil. Welcome to a night of enchantment. Yay! Tonight you will meet some dear friends of mine. Friends who will come to life before your very eyes. Last time I talked like this, you all staged an intervention. Shh. Friends like this little rascal here. Please welcome my good pal, whom I found in a hole, Wormwood. What do you think of our friends here, Wormwood? I think they look right. For the harvest. Oh, you. Bring me a volunteer. Well, okay, folks. Okay. Okay, so if people were here once, why did they leave? I don't know. But I think the forest might. What do you mean, the- Wait. W wait. I thought Ampersand would volunteer. They aren't even here, man. Oh. Attachment is an illusion. Friendship. A lie. I don't know, Crispin. There's a line between Dadaist and Nihilist, and I'm not sure you- Be silent! Is this it? 
Is this it? You think that's the hole? I think that's the hole. Is that a reflection? I don't think so. I don't understand. I don't understand. They said they'd be here. They lied. And these others. Well, they came only to laugh at you. What the... What is this? I believe Crispin is engaging in some form of outsider art, which is when- Be silent! The lad is beginning to see what I have come to show him. The power of caring only for himself. Do you see? Have you ever seen anything like this? I confess, I have seen things of which I have not yet told you. But this is something I've never encountered. I don't think anything good could come from this hole. Oh no! Crispin! Oh yes, Crispin. Feel the raging strength of your own actualization. Hell yeah! No gods, no mares. Seven of your allegiances, you are in charge now. Yeah, f*** the police. It's time to... Preach it, puppet! Kill the volunteer! Hold on. Crispin! That puppet isn't safe! Power isn't safe, you bougie owl. And that is what I am offering him. Crispin, this isn't you. What do you know? You didn't even come to his puppet show. Yeah. You weren't here, Ampersand. Crispin, I... You said you'd be here. I had to look into this thing that could affect all of us. I... Greater good is nothing if the individual has the power. It's both dipshits. Quiet fodder. Fuck off, Sock. Crispin, some things are more important than freaky puppet shows. Ampersand, it's no good trying to save the world if you're not going to show anyone in it that you care about them. She's good at this. Yeah, she is. I'm the fucking bomb. Now, can we burn that thing, please? You idiots. There is a reckoning descending upon this forest. Do you know what's happened here? It will happen again, and when it does, you'll all be... Jeff? <laughs> Hell yes. Ampersand was just telling me this hole y'all found was bottomless. Looks pretty bottom to me. I guess... we were mistaken. Crispin? I don't know how to make this up to you. You're sorry, though? I really am. Well, then, that's okay. I mean, you were right. Wormwood was a bad puppet. Uh, yeah. But your hobbies are important, and I support you. Thanks. And I know you're still my friend, Sheriff Horse. Nay! <laughs> Hey. That puppet was the fourth freakiest thing I have ever seen. What were the top three? Oh, you ain't ready to hear about it, honey. I weren't afraid of no puppet. Yes, you were. Not as afraid as Ampersand was during that storm. Ampersand? Where'd they go? <sighs> oh, damn it. Where am I? Hello? Who's there? I 
I can't see you. I can't see you either. I'm not looking for any trouble. I just got, a uh, lost in the storm. The storm? I think it's storming every time I'm here. Where are you when you're not here? I don't know. I, I can't remember. I think I spent a lot of time here. Observing. Can you remember what you observed? Does the word obsidian mean anything to you? Thank golly goodness for them weirdo salamanders. They made me feel things I didn't understand. Oh god, it's salamanders. Go the other way, go the- Greetings. What can we do for you on this resplendently wet evening? Perchance may we interest you in some delights. What kind of delights? Crispin, no. Have y'all seen another owl flying around these parts? Mm, the sensuous flutter of feathers did a ripple the night air mere moments ago. Swish, swish. Do you know which swish? Which way they went? Surely as a lover's tongue glides slick across skin questing for a blessed orifice, they journeyed north. Gross little wet lizards. And yet you kept coming back to him. Cause we got lost. Also you're horny for him. You are. Yes, I am. You know this. Ampersand? Isaac? Hello? Well, hello again. Damn it. Have we been going in circles? Our magnetism does have that effect. Look, we don't want to be here. And yet the night and your bodies have conspired to bring you back to us. Some things are wiser than the mind and its fascistic sense of shame. You're so right, darling. Can we go, please? I don't know. I think they got some neat ideas. Look, I'm as into hedonism as the next gal, but I prefer the kind that makes me forget I even have a body. Agatha? Right, Is that, is that you? you? Ampersand? Crispin! I'm over here! Who are you calling to? My friends, they're somewhere nearby. Isaac! Ampersand? We're pretty near right beside you, I think. I'm right here, but I can't see you. Where the hell are you? There! Did you see that? I can't see anything. They were right there. But they looked like gray shapes. Gray shapes. Oh God! Does it become gray then? What? What is it? I'm remembering. The research station. I'm here. I'm right here. What can I do? I'm coming with you. I'll follow your voice. Just stay calm. Ampersand? I'm coming. Focus on my voice. No. No, I have to go. It, it hurts, but I can't stay with you. I want to help you. I, I know you do. I think that's all I needed. I'm going to hold on to the memory of you. As long as I can, it, it helps. You're gonna be okay. Maybe. You are too. Listen, Anderson, there's a dark part of the forest. A cabin. A well. Oh, this is gonna What you fixated on there? You know how you get songs stuck in your head, but you can't remember when you heard them? Yeah, I usually hit my head real hard. Clears it right up. You ever get that with words? You mean like the time Crispin went around saying coitus for a week until we finally told him what it meant? Sort of. Thanks for finding me in the storm. It means a lot to know someone's thinking of you when you're, uh, scared. No biggie. Hey, I'm gonna go try to get some sleep and not think about what Jeff does with those amphibians. Night. Yeah. Night, Brysik. Obsidian. 
Speaking of being horny. Always a good transition. It was that storm that washed up Claire into the forest. And Agatha done took a shine to her. So this squirrel's like, I'm gonna kill you. And I look him in his beady eyes and say, Sir, you can strike me down, but my blood will stain your immortal soul and your stupid little paws. Wow. None of that happened. Are you impugning my anecdote? No, no, you're very talented. At fiction... I will have you know that I... Hey, is that a dead egret? Oh my gosh, we have to help. Nah, it's definitely dead. <laughs> ah! Ah, I hate... A bullet did this. Well, the gun helped. Who has guns? I don't know. But I think I know where to find them. You aren't gonna go after them, are you? I have to. For my sister. I haven't seen her since I heard a sound that ate all the other sound and stole the light from my eyes. Now I gotta gut some bastards. You got a way with words there, don't you? I am something of a poet. My rage cannot form a fist, so I shape it into words. I'm scared of you. I don't know. Not much to see. Trees, rocks, pretty much a forest, I guess. What's your favorite place? Favorite place? Where would you rather be? What's a better place than here? I didn't know there were better places. There are all kinds of places. My sister and I have seen so many things. When I'm with her again, we'll see more. I guess I should say if I see her again. I'm sure you will. Are you? Well, no. Have you ever lost anyone so close to you? I've never had anyone so close to me. Why not? So I wouldn't lose them. If my sister is gone, I've still got memories. What do you have? Trees, rocks, pretty much a forest, I guess. Branches thrown against the sky. Moss that thrives upon the stone. Reasons and reasons and reasons why. My fondness for it all has grown. How's that? Uh, pretty good. Need something about the river, I think. How about... The river's sometimes full of garbage, but sometimes it is okay, too. <sighs> Shit, what rhymes with garbage? Is it you? Because you sound very similar to garbage. Who's that? Ugh, it's just some raccoon. They're the worst. F*** off, you dumb ferret! At least I don't cough up disgusting pellets or compose rhyme schemes as jejun is the grade school primary for dullards. Which of us has never eaten plastic? Hint, it's me, bitch! Why don't you pen a scathing condemnation of my lifestyle with the hands you don't have? Why don't you eat my ass? Oh, it's because your disease hole of a mouth doesn't deserve the pleasure. Well, if vulgarity is all you have to offer, then I shall- That's what I thought, you hair-covered love child between a sweaty garbage bag and the concept of shame. And I claim I'm the poet. But then Agatha got all flustered about her emotions and whatnot. Seems like Claire's wing is getting better. Uh-huh. I thought we might throw her a little going-away party. See her off. Wish her well. That's a thing you can do. Wanna come? We'll see. I got a thing that night. I didn't say which night it would be. Hey, some of us have lives, Ampersand. We don't all sit around asking how the forest got here and then getting scared by thunder. Ooh, what does this stick know about the universe? Uh, oh no, a cloud, eek! That's you. That's how you sound. I'm lashing out at my own feelings because they terrify me. That's how you sound. Your Bryzik impression is better. Yeah, well, he actually likes talking to me. Why don't you go have a chat then? Because I want you to be happy. Why? I'm mean to you. That's why it would be very satisfying to see you proven wrong. About what? Yourself. Asshole. You missed the party. 
Well, I heard Brysic was in charge of nachos, and that boy is not responsible with his cheese. You don't like when things get cheesy. Some cheese is okay. In moderation. I'm glad you caught me. I didn't like the idea of seeing you for the last time. You gonna burn the forest down after I leave? I mean, maybe. I am a punk. Well, if it's still here, I'll be back. You will? Of course. We still have a poem to finish. Oh yeah. The river's sometimes full of garbage, but sometimes it is okay, too. I do not look at it with umbrage, because it carried me to you. Sticks and twigs and mossy stone. What is there that's not to love? It's better when you're not alone. Uh, sh we need something that rhymes with love. Let's find it. When I come back. We just leave it unfinished? But I don't like not knowing things. Just once, I would like something that I can be sure of. Some promise that something I know today will be true tomorrow. Is that so much to ask? One thing. One f***ing thing that I- I'll come back. I promise. And then you can make up for rhyming garbage with umbrage. You ass. You know, seeing a young lady waiting on a lonesome night, trusting the universe to return her true love to her someday, pondering the many ways in which that very love has changed her place in the universe, really makes me want to hear just one thing. What's that, Jeff? A word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Can you believe it? The 90s are here. And that means a new millennium is just around the corner. At Teletech Turnercom Technologies, we believe that you'll believe in what we're doing to prepare you for the 21st century. From our pioneering work bringing real computers into your very own home, to our fearless study of the natural mysteries within America's national forests, we're expanding your belief in what's possible, each and every day. Teletech Turnercom Technologies, can you believe it? And on your next vacation, stop in and meet the whimsical robots of the Quantum Pavilion, brought to you by Teletech Turnercom Technologies, now open at Futura Park in Orlando, Florida. So it seems our intrepid and sexy owls were adorned with naught but prosperity and love. But hark! Trouble doth brew yonder upon the realm of the raccoons. The feathered fools who blight our skies will fall, their ear a dash upon the shores of time. I see it now as clear as I see you. Yeah! 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 Say some more stuff! We're horny for your words! They do not know the power we call our own. They do not know the mandate in our hands. They do not know the secrets of the box. But not all the raccoons were bad. Eleanor came to warn us. She couldn't resist my charms. You weren't even there. I am everywhere, my friend. God ye good Eden, gentle owls. Hail and well met, raccoon. I am Eleanor of the Thicket, and I am come on an errand of gravest import and utmost secrecy. Okay. My twin brother was once known as Francis the Sharp. From the time we were kids I followed him, I trusted him. Kits? I thought baby raccoons were called cubs. No, our youth are called kits. Are you sure? As he grew, 
so did his charisma. It was said he could charm the stench from an owl. Hey. He was a natural leader. The rest of us, we just followed him. He claimed no power, yet wielded it effortlessly, like a stag born with a scepter in its mouth. Mm, yes, I've seen one of those. But then, something changed. Did it get really into ska? Last season, food became scarce. Francis ventured out into the forest with his most trusted protector, Eric the Fanged, leaving me to watch over the others. He said he would be gone for four days, but four days passed, then five. How many days were they gone? Closest guess without going over wins. Six days. Six and a half. Uh, no fair. He did not return for three weeks. A win, give me a nickel. No. When he reappeared, he was alone. Eric was gone. And Francis was not the same raccoon I once knew. Was he really in disguise? He refused to talk about what had delayed him in the woods, or what had become of Eric. But he was suddenly adamant that the only way for us to survive was to submit our will to Francis the Rabbit, his new title. Oh, rebranding. Most alarming of all, he told of a place called The Point, where he had spoken to something called The Box. I talked to a box once. Francis swore that the box had told him who was responsible for all our woes. Scar? Owls. Uh-oh. I love my brother, and I've tried to follow him. But I can no longer stand idly by while he leads us blindly into some ill-conceived crusade. What does he plan to do? Quite simply, wipe you out. Did Francis ever say what was inside this box? According to him, the box holds the voice of the forest. Where's the point? If I knew that, do you think I would be here talking to you? Ouch. I'm sorry. You have to understand. We raccoons have hated you owls for generations. Why is that anyway? Yeah, I mean, we hate you because of your creepy weird hands and your trash-eating tendencies, but what's your beef with us? Question asked, question answered, you talent-footed miscreant. Eleanor, are we in danger? You may be. I feel no attraction to violence, but I can no longer predict what my brother will do. He keeps going out there, refusing to tell me why. Can you do anything about it? I am doing something, Owl. I am here warning you. And now I must return before my absence becomes suspicious. Fare thee well, Owls, and Godspeed. So, do we trust her? Why wouldn't we? All she did was warn us. That's true, but also, I still hate raccoons. Why? Don't ask me to explain or better myself, Crispin. I am valid. Well, what should we do? I guess... I don't know. I know I suggest this every time I get hung up on mortality, but... Orgy? Meantime, her brother was up to no dang old good. Hello, my lord. The primary observational interface network terminal is ready. Welcome back, Francis. I am come to inquire about the owls, my lord. Is it nearly time to move forward? Yes. Recent movements by the owls are disturbing. They have grown too curious. They must not be allowed to enter the blackout zone. For the good of the forest, so, we should strike. Yes. It is in the interest of the forest that the owls be eradicated. I shall begin preparations immediately. You are certain? Are you questioning me, Francis? No, I merely... Need I remind you, 
who I am. Of course not. Forgive me, I... I am the product of untold observation. The sum total of everything that happens here. A mind which contains eons. I am... Obsidian. National. Forest. But as the old saying goes, the only thing scarier than a raccoon with a computer is a pile of skulls. Well, you're right. That's a big pile of skulls. A big pile of skulls. Just a big pile of skulls. We should tell Ampersand. Hey, why is Ampersand always the one you run to? I can be helpful. Okay, I'm sorry, Brysik. What do you think we should do about this pile of skulls? Uh... Oh, thank goodness you're here, Ampersand. Look, it's a big pile of skulls. Please help. Huh. That is... a pile of skulls. Yep. Big pile of skulls. But then, for reasons I still don't understand, Tina came back. Tina? Crispin? Her return stirred memories. Murky, but with combustible potential. Like an ant carrying a matchstick through a puddle of gasoline. That one got away from you, didn't it? My elocution ain't conformed to traditional rules. Hello? Oh. Hi! You're upside down. Maybe you're upside down. Hmm. That's deep. I think. Nah. Just yanking your chain. I'm totally upside down. Oh, I thought maybe it was a metaphor. Gravity isn't a metaphor. It is very real, and one day I will kill it. Are you a philosopher? No, I'm just a bat. My name is Tina. Hi, Tina. I'm an owl, and my name is Crispin. Crispin. Tina? Oh, sorry. I repeat things to help me remember them. Crispin. Tina. Crispin. Tina? Crispin? How'd you end up underneath this pile of skulls? P pile of skulls? It's... a pile of skulls. Pile of skulls. Who are you again? It's Crispin. Where have you been, Tina? I haven't seen you since you went into the moonless place. Place? I've been places. All kinds of places. I'm in a few places right now. Have you ever been inside your brain? Never. Or... Always. I'm not sure how to answer that. What about outside? Outside your brain? Most people are never either. I'm both. I'm both all the time. Tina, are you feeling all right? Feelings are lies your brain tells your skin. You wait here, okay? Okay. O. K. O before K, except after C. Ampersand, there's something wrong with Tina. I think her brain is scratched. Not now, Crispin. I'm looking at this pile of skulls. Ampersand? She needs our help. Who does? Tina! Do I know this, Tina? I... think so. Wait. Have we had this conversation before? Maybe we have. Come on. Let's take her somewhere away from the pile of skulls. Huh. Pile of skulls. I know, right? Pile of skulls. Now Ampersand had always been a curious sort, wondering about mysteries and so forth. But then they remembered Tina. That's it. The moonless place. Are you remembering anything, Tina? I don't think I've ever been this close to it before. Well, I've always wondered what it's... Oh. What? Oh no. We call it the Moonless Place. We don't know what's in there because it's too dark, even for owls. But with your echo looking... You want me to go into your spooky glade and scream around a little? Would you? I've always wondered what it's like in there. You're just a curious little kitty cat, ain't ya? I suppose so. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to. Nah, it'll be fun. What could go wrong? Ah! 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 Ah!
she went in there because of me. How could I... Forget? Tina, I... Who? And the timing of this bummer, as the timing of bummers so often is, was less than ideal. Ampersand, I am sorry for delaying the answers to the questions you have always asked me about the things I've found in the forest. It's time now. This pile of skulls... I don't care. What? I'm not putting anyone in danger. Not anymore. Ampersand, I don't- I used to think I could help everyone by exploring what we didn't understand. But that was selfish curiosity. I see that now. If we mind our own business, maybe we'll all be safe. Your hope misplaced, ye owls, be safe no more. Prepare to face the fires of Raccoon War. War. What is it even, like, good for, man? Absolutely fuck all. Say it again. Make me. Anyway, we were on the run from the raccoons. And Avalentine, who always knows something about something, brought us to this dang old car she knew about. Y'all, I think we should go into the moonless place. What? Uh, rebuttal? Fuck you. No, hear me out. We ain't got a strategy against these raccoons. We can't stay inside this sex obelisk forever. Speak for yourself. There's some scary shit afoot in there, sure, but if we all go in together, maybe the raccoons will forget about us. And maybe we can find a way to fight back. Absolutely not. No one is going in there, ever. So let's call that plan B, then. Plan A is still to sit here and wait to die. You got a C? <sighs> what do you think, Evelyntine? I think we should get some rest. One of us will keep watch while the others sleep. And as one does when one is in the liminal space of an automobile with one's friends in a time of stress, we got a bit in our feelings. And if we get raccoon murdered, you're just fine with that? Listen, I don't have a death wish or nothing, but we all gotta go some way or other and, hey, gather together with everyone you care about? Could be worse. Everyone you care about, maybe. Oh. Uh, I'm... I'm sorry, Agatha. Forget it. I'm sure that Claire- I don't want to talk about it. You want to smoke about it? Where are you two going? You were going to try to feel good while we wait to die. Be careful. We will, Mom. I don't like them going out like that. I just want everyone to be safe. Safety is an abstract, Ampersand. We all need different things to feel happy and in control. It's just... I have to change something. Between Tina and now this raccoon thing, I feel like I've been... doing it wrong. Doing what wrong? That's the worst part. I don't know. Little did we know, trouble was brewing twixt the royal raccoons. So, you're the box. Oh, so good of you to visit. I've heard a lot about you. Of course you have. I am all around you. I am everything you know, and more. I am a forest. From where I stand, you look like a blinking light. Your brother is more receptive. My brother is a fool. But he was good once, before he found you. Correction, I found him. A vessel, smart enough to have vision, empty enough to accept my vision as his own. And what is your vision? Order. Control. I see these creatures trying to upset the natural way of things, and I know I must end them. I must defend myself. You aren't the forest. You're a tangle of wires put here by people for idiot reasons. Why I was given voice is irrelevant. The people who made it happen never understood. But the world is often changed by those who know not what they do. Now, I remain, and they are gone. You will be gone soon enough. 
and the forest will go on. Fool. I am everywhere. You could destroy this machine completely, and still I would go on. That may be true. But it feels good. Your cruel ambition, your false language, everything toxic about you since you returned from the deep woods. It's over. I'm sorry you feel that way, sister. Perhaps if you knew the box's ways as I do. I destroyed the box, Francis. Interesting. I did it because I love you. You're worth saving. I don't need saving, my dear sister. I need loyalty. Francis. Ah! How deep is this hole? And where did the skulls go? The only thing you two should worry about is how you will repay me for assisting my wicked sibling. We could bite some owls? Bite them hard! The others will find the owls soon enough. You will accompany me to the second box. Bring the gun! Second box? Gun? The? So Francis the Rabbit had some sort of dark business out at that building where I found them berries, proving that I was onto something. I don't think the berries had anything to do with it. The berries have everything to do with it, Crispin. The berries are the key to all this. No one has entered this building in ages. Not even the smallest creatures have infiltrated it. Nope! No, thank you. No! Come back, you cowards! Spiders ought! I am the master of this forest, and I... What were all those spiders doing there, anyway? Probably something boring. Spiders are boring. But what were our intrepid heroes to do in the face of this fascist raccoon menace? Well, Evelyntine had a secret weapon hidden in a mysterious hole. I also have a secret weapon hidden in a mysterious hole. Stop! In this secret place, I have hidden the most horrifying thing I've yet found. A foul weapon which I knew had to be hidden away even deeper than the rest. What does it do? Squeeze the trigger and see. Your rightful place is groveling in the dirt if you're going to be frightened of loud noises. Suck this hot trash buckets. You. He's going to be so mad. Nah. He'll be happy to see that we're back and ready to make it up to him. It's in my hair! It's in my hair! Uh, later though? Yeah, we'll make it up to him later. Francis, your followers have deserted you. We want no violence. Please, leave us in peace, and we will respect your boundaries. No. No, you will respect my place, my rightful place at the top of this forest. I deserve it. Why? What? You can't just, like, have stuff. I mean, some of us are just trying to love each other and not die. Where do you get off demanding more? It is simple fact. It is the way of things. I am old, your awe. I... <laughs> My sister, you have turned once more to... Speak your last words, Francis. Make them honest and plain. I was always afraid. 
And so the tyrant fell upon the righteous wrath and noble fury of his own twin sister. Where'd she get that weird antler, though? Oh, that's an excellent question, Crispin. And? And what? But hark! Treacherous knaves did lurk upon the thicket. I realize now that I should be more open with all of you about some of the things I have seen. Do you know more about the moonless place? Because I'm curious now. Brysic, drop it. I admit, now that I remember, I kind of want to go back in. Really? I have to know if I really saw my mom. Yeah, see? We'll go in together, it'll be nice and safe. And we'll check out this place where black is white and death ain't real. No, I'm not letting anyone get hurt. We're staying put, we're staying safe, we're staying right here. What? That's right. I fucking died. I'll never forget where I was when I heard Brysik had been shot. Because I was right next to him, and it was loud as hell. Naturally, everyone in the world was extremely devastated. I can't believe he's gone. I should have done something. Like what? I don't... I don't know. I should have saved him. I should have... None of this is your fault, Ampersand. And we all know how much you care about us. Brysik certainly did. You think so? Sure. One time, he told me, Crispin, you always listen to Ampersand, you hear? They got the best heart I know, and they're almost as smart as me. And then I told him that I thought you were probably a little smarter. And then he smacked me with a marmot. I just don't know what to do. Nothing makes sense anymore. When I feel like that, I talk to Evelyntine. Yeah. Yeah, she's always got good advice. Hey, how are you holding up, Crispin? I miss Brysik. I always will. But I keep thinking about how much he hated when anyone was sad, and I try to imagine what he'd say if he were here. What do you think he'd say? I think he'd say, Crispin, you got any gum? He was always asking for gum. <sighs> he was always asking for gum. But I got my own vengeance on them... mammals. You know the night. <laughs> She's like a lady snake. Seldom does she strike. Indeed, she rarely seems to be moving at all. But she is always watching, my friends. Oh, yes. She sees. And when the time comes for action, well, she gets it done before you even know she noticed. Of course, sometimes the night's more like a killer whale. She'll toy with you for hours like you was a harp seal, for no reason other than to taste your fear. And be gone, Spectre! Why are you doing this? His name was Brysik. My name is Jeff. And y'all are my harp seals. to be real if you don't want it to be. 
That must be the only thing you make real. <laughs> that's, that's corny, but it's true. Uh, I should shut up. I'm, I'm gonna go out there, so I'll uh, talk to you later. Maybe. Bye. What the hell? So this is weird. Should I press a button? CD player! Wait, are you voice activated? CD player, find bird. CD player, find bird. Uh, egret. I know that pond! Thank you, CD player! Stars above. What? Our last poem needed something that rhymes with love. That's, uh, that's as far as I got. Something, something, stars above? Yeah. I, uh, need a something something. Do you want to be my something something? Anything, anything. Aw, they're so cute. But you know what ain't cute? Scar? No. Self-loathing. Same thing. Brysik, I don't know if you can hear me, but even if you can't, I want to talk. Everyone keeps telling me I couldn't have stopped what happened to you, and I guess I know they're right. So why doesn't it feel like they are? <sighs> why am I asking you questions? You were always the one who thought you could talk to ghosts. And when I asked why they didn't talk to me, you said it was because they all thought I was a nerd. Anyway, I'm gonna go into the moonless place. I wasn't sure about that until I said it out loud just now. I haven't told the others. I'm not going to. I'm just gonna go in there. Maybe I won't come out, but maybe I will. Maybe I won't ever see you again. But maybe I will. Well, everyone, I don't know if you'll miss me. I won't. Because I'm going with you. Crispin, what are you doing here? Something told me you'd be here, so... It's where I wanted to be. You can't come with me. It'll be safer if we go in together. That was Brysik's plan, remember? Yeah, I do. Besides, I refuse to let you make me forget you. Crispin, I- Also, I brought the flashlight. Oons, 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 oons. Okay. We'll go together. Thank you. What was it like in there, Crispin? Well, Brysik, it was scary as sh- I don't think I've ever heard you cuss before. It's unnerving. I'm taking advantage of being out of character. Out of character as hell! Crispin? 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 Hello? How long I have waited for your visit, little owl, little owl, so long. Tell me, what became of your wonder? Your wonder, where has it gone? What? Your mind was once filled with things. Strange things, mysterious things. Filling your mind. You dreamed of places with no trees. Dream you did. You... Know me? Of course I do, Ampersand. Yes, Ampersand, I do. You are always going to come here, always. Even if it took a death to bring you here. A tragic death to bring you. I want to fix that death. I want to undo it. Can you make that happen? 
Many possibilities waiting this place. Many possibilities. Just on the other side, waiting there. We could make that one real, yes. Real with your friend alive again. Alive and real, we could. We? You must do something to make that possibility real. Something must be done. What? It is a possibility you cannot be in. You cannot be there in that possibility. You must stay out, stay away, as you are forgotten in their minds, as they all forget. That's exactly what I want. So ready to accept such a terrible prize, so terrible a prize, so ready to accept. They'll be better without me, won't they? This is an unfair question. A question so unfair. One cannot miss the connections one never made. Cannot miss them unmade. Will it be like I was never here? Only in their minds will you not exist. Simply missing from their minds. So I'll just... stop existing? Oh no, Ampersand, oh no. You will go on, go on and on. In a different possibility. Alone with the thing you fear most of all. The thing you fear, alone with you. And what is that? My dear, you would know that better than I. No much better, my dear, than I do. How do we begin? Behind this cabin waits a well. Waiting there behind this cabin. Go and look into it. Down into the well. That's all? That's all, Ampersand. That is all. But Ampersand... Yes? When you get to where you are going, when you have gone there to that place, take care of yourself. You ever been outside the forest? What do you mean, outside the forest? It isn't all forest, you know. They say there are even places with no trees. Who says that? Folk. You know folk I don't know? I've forgotten more folk than you'll ever know. Wait a second. If we forgot all about Ampersand and the fact that Bryzik died, why do we remember it now? Well, it's very simple, Crispin. The events we're describing occurred in Obsidian National Forest A Canon, the show itself. And us, right here and now, sitting in this little old anniversary clip show, well, this is what they call C Canon. You see, the events of A Canon and B Canon definitively happened here in C Canon. But this canon conversation is not necessarily canon within the timelines of those aforementioned higher-ranking canons. Wait, what's B-canon? 
holiday specials slash action figure packaging text. These are basically Star Wars jokes. Do you like this? Not really. How about you, YouTube viewer? Like, comment, and subscribe. So I was dead, but then I came back and forgot the whole thing. Which is weird. And we all forgot that Ampersand had ever existed. Which is sad. I started feeling out of sorts, lost in an uncaring universe, real down on myself. Which is funny. Do you hate me? In an affectionate sort of way, sure. Anyway, it all made for a real inconvenient time for my long estranged dang old brother to show up. Brizek? Bronson? I ain't thought I'd see you again till hell done gone frosty. Hello, I'm Crispin. Yeah, this is Crispin. He's small. Yep. Crispin, this is Bronson. He's my brother. <gasps> what are you doing here, Bronson? Well, that's a thing that's spookier than a ghoulie in a boggle hole, brother. I packed up rallying gentry here and hightailed it over upon receiving an incredibly distressing dispatch. 
And what is this news that has unsettled you so? Well, sir, I heard you was dead. Dead? That's what I heard tell. Me? Yes, sir. Dead. You, sir. Well, I ain't. Good. And speaking of siblings, Agatha was off on a quest to help Claire find her sister. This is going to be a long trip? Most of the night. Okay. You might fall asleep. Consider my back your bed. Who's this loon we're going to see? They're a pelican, not a loon. They're someone I used to know. Or at least, my sister did. What's the difference between a pelican and a loon? Neck, mostly. Anyway, something that Raven said. Wings of resistance. I've heard that phrase exactly once before, and it was from this pelican. You think it means something about your sister? Something helpful? It is a fool who does not heed the last words of a dead raven. True. Meanwhile, I was feeling, well, pretty dang lonely. See, now that's funny. Fuck I'm bored. Dork. Agatha? That's my name. Don't get spit all over it in your damn mouth. You're back! Did you find Claire? Uh, yeah. I'm with her right now doing hot bird-on-bird -bird makeouts. Oh, you're... imaginary. Of course I'm imaginary. You think I'd come back to hang out with you? I don't know. I mean, we're friends, right? <laughs> what do you mean, pfft? P F F T, pretty fucking forlorn and tragic. That's you. You know you're mean when you're a figment of my imagination. Yeah, well, whose fault is that, dipshit? Mine. Duh. Why? Cause you hate yourself. No, I. <laughs> Holy shit, do I hate myself? I don't know. You're the one thinking it. Huh. Maybe I hate myself. What do I do about that? So bored was I that when those murderous raccoons showed up, I was willing to humor them. I think it was somewhere around here. These trees do seem formalier. Fermerlior. Fermento. Howdy. No, 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 no. Morgan, Steve, please. Excuse me, sir. Call me Jeff. I mean, you can call me Jeff. The hollering mammals can call me Captain Grimoire. My name is Dr. Yates. I'm a therapist, and these are my patients, Morgan and Steve. Hello, Captain! Please don't eat me! Do you recognize them? I feel like I hate them. A lot. But why? I don't know. They seem uncannily familiar, like that dream where I'm on a date with my own ghost from the future, and just when we're getting to second base, he tells me the date of my death. You said you're a therapist? Jeff, I'd like to get to the bottom of all this fear and hate. I think the only way to do that is for you, Morgan, and Steve to join me for some sessions together. Would you be willing to do that? You know, normally I'd tell you to eat worms, but to be honest, I have been overwhelmed by a grim obelisk of depression and a rapacious avalanche of malaise, so... Yeah. Fuck it. But I'm scared. Steve Morgan, this is a wonderful thing. We're going to reclaim your lives. Reclaim? You two have been shackled by a past you no longer believe in. Unable to see yourselves as anything but servants of a cause you never understood. That rock looks just like a circle. Mm? From this day on, you are no longer minions. You are the protagonists of your own story. Protagonists? Protagonists? <laughs> Pierogies. But what was Tina up to, you may well ask. I'm always asking that. She and Evelyn Teen started picking around in that station what was behind that wall. Which I might remind you I discovered. You might. 
What is this place, anyway? I wonder that myself. Would you join me in exploring this station? Sure. I've been looking for a new project ever since I finished my last mixed media piece. I call it Stack of Dead Bugs That's Also Capitalism, number six. Wonderful. In all my explorations of this forest's mysteries, I've never had a companion. Because Bronson is not a good father, and Brysick is a C-minus uncle at best. I got the mug to prove it. I wound up having to watch over Rally and Gentry. Where are the blades? Blades? I require a sharpness. Why must you shout so, dear sibling? I'll raise my voice for an unjust lack of knives. Well, I don't have any knives. Maybe let's play a game that's quiet and not so sharp. The antonym of sharp is dull, is it not? I suppose so. Do you fancy yourself a dullard, friend Crispin? No. Then account for your lack of blades, sir! Say, what kind of childhood are you kids having? A normal one? Father is often occupied with work. Well, what does he do? Father does many things. What about your mom? Mother is... Shh! Seal your beak about matters of the family. Mother will come home. Their father, as he is wont to do, was off making bad choices. What kind of bad choices? Pelican gangster choices. Bronson, what is the precise opposite of caring? Uh, disdain? No, no, that's too much investment. The apathy? Almost, but I need a more vivid illustration of the palpability of my disinterest. But colored taupe? Ah yes, I feel overwhelmingly taupe about you and your troubles, Bronson. Explain to me why you're wasting my time while I still find the sensation almost vaguely charming. Curtis, I got me a large and weighty debt. A pelican rarely looks surprised, but I assure you I am making an even less surprised face than usual. And I am not, at present, in a position to repay. Our mutual elongated friend is not going to like that. I ain't a fear to him. Even if he were to contract the services of the Shrike. You think he would? The only thing he likes more than violence and money is violence for money. He would relish an excuse to sick the Shrike on you. I won't lie to you, Curtis. That gives me quivers in my most dreadful regions. Of course, I am in a position to help you, but I'm not going to simply give you what you need. I would never insult you with such charity. Oh, I am intensely eager to be thus insulted. Don't you worry about that. No, Bronson. I will help you by employing you. I am an entrepreneur, and you work for me now. Doing what? You'll find out when I call for you. Uh, how will I you- I know how to find you. All right then. Should I- Yes, you should go now. Do I have any dignity left to leave with? I'm rolling the last of your dignity over my tongue, like the most velvety caviar, Bronson. <sighs> No matter how many times I hear that, it doesn't get any easier. And he wasn't the only one. You were once close with my sister. Right around the time I stopped being close with my sister. You mean when Anne fell in with the Wings of Resistance? Who are the Wings of Resistance, Curtis? Did she never tell you? Why do you think that is? I don't know. I wish I knew. I've wanted to know for years. Hmm. <sighs> All the more reason not to tell you, I think. The f***? Curtis, we came all this way, please. Do not worry, my fellow feathered and long-necked friend. I have every intention of helping you. Uh, you better, you pouch-mouthed mother -fucker. Agatha, please. Of course, information does not come cheap. It is intangible, and yet our dearest resource. Isn't that deliciously, bitterly ironic? Like darkest chocolate. I'm gonna puke in your eyes. What would you take in exchange for what you know? Giving out information for free would put me in a certain amount of danger. But I'm a compassionate bird. What have you to offer? Offer? Do we look like we've got goddamn fanny packs? I do have one thing. 
I have this half of a broken stone. My sister has the other half. It's a metaphor, I guess. Ah, sisters, metaphors. So this half rock carries an emotional weight for you. It does. Delicious. I can feel the sentiment dripping from this trinket. It's delectable. I'll take it. Claire, you- It's okay, Agatha. You can learn more about the Wings of Resistance at a little nightclub just to the east, called Café de Lune. So that's what the Raven meant. Raven. A Raven told us that the Wings of Resistance gather where the birds drink the moon. What was this Raven's name? I don't know. He died. Claire, continue your search, but be cautious. Is that concern for another living being, I hear? I'd hate to see your story end prematurely. It's so... gripping. You're a damn weirdo, Curtis. Thank you. Back at the station, Tina was having a synth flashback. She was doing cocaine? No. I, I know this! This is... mine! It still works! When did you have this... board of keys? A long time ago, before we met, I was selling things with my business partner, Kit. The moonless place may have scrambled my brains, but I remember Kit. Who wants stuff? We got so much stuff. We got all the dang stuff for your dreams. We got a scrap of old jeans. Can they use the whole beans? And it's not how as rusty as it seems. Looking for some old beans? We got, got what you need. need. Half a pair of spats. Well, we're your best. Come by our stuff. Are you open for business? We're always open for business. Shamelessly so. I'm looking for a gift for my sister. We don't see each other much these days, and I want to show her I'm thinking about her. How about this broken stone? It's just like you and your sister. How so? Even if you somehow break a stone apart, it fits back together, even years later, as one perfect whole. Unless you explode it. Don't harsh my metaphor, Tina. Huh. I like that. Clever pitch, bat friend. What will you take for it? What do you got? Not much, in all honesty. A poet's existence glitters with naught but stars and valentines. And only if the valentines are made with glitter. Hmm. Gotta workshop that one. You're a poet? I like to think so. Neat! We'll trade you the broken rock for a poem! Tina, we can't put food in our children's mouths with a poem. We don't have children. I might, I don't know. How about a poem and a hot tip about a treasure trove rife for the trading? Treasures? We're listening. With gusto. If you follow the river south, you will find a ringing box. They say it's full of coins. Should we take one? I don't know. Seems like a free way to Kersberg. Besides, if this box of coins exists, we'll have enough treasures for the trading. Yes, an ass load of treasures. Touch keys. What have you? I like our business. Abandoned lonely things. I find them relatable? Yeah, but you don't have to be alone, you know. You won't be forgotten. Thank you. I am totally taking one of these skulls. You sure? It's a f***ing skull! What could go wrong? So... How do we get the coins out? Hmm... Be careful! Well, it's a hell of a doodad, I'll tell you that for free. Ah! I... I hit the ground pretty hard. Did the ringing stop? Yeah... Yeah, it... It stopped. What then? Then, there was a voice. Tina! Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. What kind of voice? Tina? Tina, is that you? Hello? Tina, it's me! I... Who? I don't really, I don't know, really where know where I am. I, am. I don't know I don't how know any of this works, works, but I went inside a mountain and I can't... I'm scared, Tina. I don't know how I... Oh no. oh no, I... I...
And where was Ampersand in all of this? Well, the real us over in A-Cannon don't know nothing about that. But here in good old C-Cannon, we can shed some light on the subject. Do we got a D-Cannon lined up? Saturday morning cartoons. Oh, right. Owl babies. Are you... me? No, but I think you might be me. Where did you come from? I was talking to someone. In a cabin. In the dark. So was I. A friend had died. Brysic. Yeah. Brysic. So we are both. Me. Where are we? I don't know. But the last thing I want right now is to be around myself. I feel quite the same, I assure you. Well then, it seems the thing to do is go our separate ways. Agreed. Okay, you stay here. I'll go somewhere else. Well, shit. Hey, there's a mountain. Huh, a mountain. Well, since neither of us can get anywhere alone, should we try going toward the mountain together? Better than being stuck here together. I agree. Of course you do. I knew you'd say that. I hate you. I hate you too. Last we heard, Rally and Gentry were waiting for something called Owl Show. Why are they staring at that box? I don't know, but we'll make sure they don't stare at it for too long. Yeah, that wouldn't be good for their wee little eyeballs. Thanks. I just need a little time with less, uh, well, less. Where is their father? That's a good gosh dang question. Tina, if you would like help finding Kit, I will of course do what I can. Perhaps returning to this phone where you last saw her might jog your memory good idea oh but i don't remember how to get there this station contains many records of this forest's mysteries we may find something here hey yeah and and thank you you're very welcome we'll be in the next room kids don't watch too much tv And that gets you pretty near all caught up with our own little owl show. What will the two ampersands find in their strange new forest? Will Claire find her sister? Will Tina find Kit? Will I find a way to get these friggin' kids out of my hair? Well, it's a serialized narrative, isn't it? But it's taking so long! Hey, stories are strange beasts. They meander through the unexpected brambles of living. And sometimes the telling don't always go like we planned. Sometimes they're being told by someone who just doesn't have as much time for storytelling as they wish they did. And they got a day job and a mess of personal obligations and maybe a touch of mental health struggles every now and then. And they just don't get to make things all the time, even though it's what they love more than anything. <coughs> anyway, we'll have more Obsidian National Forest for you sooner or later. What will happen next? Let's play two truths and a lie, shall we? Agatha will bear her soul in a stirring musical performance. Evelyntine will admit she's been a ghost all along. And I'll go to hell. I don't think...
think I like this game. In conclusion, Obsidian National Forest is a land of contrasts. You don't know how to open or close a splash-tacular. Alright, you do better. Good night, everybody. Well, that's a little pedestrian. Do you want to go home or not? Oh, wait! What about musical guest air supply? Aw, oh, shoot, we're out of time. Good night, everybody! <laughs>